Hello and welcome everybody. Today we're going to be chatting to Andrew aka Money Mental UK, a YouTuber and part-time reseller. Hang on a minute, I say part-time reseller. Andrew's actually managed to clear £60,000 worth of debt in just a few years through reselling. So that's some feat for a part-time reseller. So he's going to share his journey right after the intro. Hey, I'm Carboot Chris. I'm a full-time UK online reseller. I operate mainly on eBay and also Whatnot, but also some other platforms as well. I'm going to bring you regular podcasts all about reselling, hopefully to keep your company, to entertain, or maybe to educate. Who knows? Welcome to the Everything Reselling Podcast. Hello, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the podcast. It's Series 2, Episode 6. We are cooking on gas now. And, um, yeah, today we have a guest coming on, Andrew uh, Money Mentor UK. Some people in the community will know Andrew and some won't. Um, but if you're new here, if this is, if this is the first uh, YouTube podcast you've watched or podcast that you've listened to because you might be listening to this on Spotify, Apple Music, etc. right now. Uh, I appreciate you being here and thank you for listening. Um, if you're able to give me a uh, like a five star, um, do it at the end to make sure you know that it has been a five, five star podcast. But that would be great because it is really difficult to build a podcast and every little review counts. So thank you so much if you can do that. Anyway, I'm going to get going. Um, we're going to bring Andrew on and um, let him introduce himself. Hello, Andrew. Welcome. Hi, Chris. Thank you for having me on your wonderful podcast. I've been looking forward to it all week. You know you've hit the big time now, mate. You, you're on the podcast. That's it. This is it. This is my first ever podcast. So hello, Spotifyans. I don't know what you call people <laughs> listening on Spotify. Hello, Apple, Apple musicians. Apple musicians, fantastic. Hello to whatever platform you're on. Hello, I'm Andrew or Money Mental UK on YouTube and the founder of Money Mental UK Limited, which currently consists of an eBay store, an Amazon store and a Facebook group. You, you do quite a lot, don't you? To be honest, you fill your time pretty well. I mean, you've got a job as well, haven't you? Yeah, I, I've got a, a job in crisis management uh, where sometimes I work crazy hours there. So I come to eBay and Amazon and reselling for a break. Plus, are we allowed to to mention um, the, your name is Money Money Mental UK? So there's some mental health sort of thing in the background going on there. Do you want to let us know about that? Absolutely, yeah. It's funny enough. That's the thing that first got me into uh, into reselling. Yeah. Um, for a long time, I struggled with uh, anxiety and depression. Um, comes in waves. Sometimes I can be absolutely fine. Other times, it can be uh, uh, a real struggle to get through uh, through daily life. Um, so I am medicated um, to uh, to help me with that, and I have a, a, a therapist that I see uh, when things get bad. So always managed to pull through it. But um, when I first started my YouTube channel, it was actually focused more on the mental health side of things rather than the yeah. money and the reselling because it was it was before I was a reseller. Yeah. Um, but but things have transitioned as my mental health has improved. I've moved more towards the reselling side of things. That's good to hear, mate. And um, we've known each other for quite a while now. And um, I, before we came on the podcast today, I went back and looked at your very, very first video. Oh, good God. <laughs> I thought you might say that. If anybody's not watched um, Andrew's uh, channel or videos, uh, go back and watch that very first one. That was kind of really early doors. That's five years ago, your first video. Half a decade. You were pro at that uh, in that video. You were promoting a lot your website. Is that still going? It is still there. Um, there are some. It's the moneymental.co.uk website. It, it's still going because my email address for eBay and everything is linked to it. So I thought right. may as well keep it keep it going. I haven't updated any articles in it for a while, but there's certainly some early articles in there if you if you browse through it that are a lot about mental health about. 
getting better sleep and some of my story and journey uh i think a bit maybe even a bit about my struggles with addiction that uh, first got me into reselling uh, i can't remember to be honest because it's been about five years since i uh exactly. since i last looked at it exactly it's, yeah uh, it's still there and if you go on it and click on an ad i get like a tiny percentage of ad revenue as well so i'm at two pound 61 for the last three years of ad revenue oh, from that nice nice every penny counts though doesn't it especially uh what, well, when you've been doing what you've been doing but they they, they changed youtube so you uh, sorry adsense so you used to be able to get the a combined payout that come with your website and your youtube channel but now they've separated the two out so that website is just never going to pay out but yeah hopefully there's some stuff there that people might come across find useful might help them um yeah. and my contact details are buried on there as well if anyone ever wants to chat okay that's that's good of you okay right let's just start right. it, at the beginning of sort of this this journey and um uh, it's the headline on the title of the podcast uh you managed to pay off or you, you let's start first with you managed to run up a fair old debt 60 grand andrew i mean how did Six. this happen? what 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 happened if, if you don't mind me asking and you're okay to talk about it yeah no it's fine it's it's something i'm always uh prepared to be open and honest about because i think doing so helps other people who, who may go into a similar position but yeah. yeah about probably about six years ago um i uh yeah it, it's almost exactly six years to the date in fact um i started uh doing something called matched betting as a side mm -hmm. hustle to earn some extra money. Um, and I was doing well with it. I was getting some some good returns coming in. And then I moved into doing the uh, casino side of it. And I got addicted to online roulette. And I managed to blast through all the money I'd made from match betting, um, all, all my credit cards, um, all my savings. Um, and then I took out a loan to pay off everything and instead of paying off everything i uh used all that because i thought oh i can get the money back and i was chasing chasing losses i think is the term and yeah in about two three weeks uh i went through um about over 50 grand and then the other Ooh. few grand that, that's on there was uh, just on my car loan uh which uh which i'd taken just just before in January. So, um, yeah, so I got through a huge amount of money without, you know, I wasn't keeping track of it or anything. I was just like, oh, I've, I've got some money. I've just got paid. And it got so bad that, like, I couldn't, I wasn't even eating because every penny I had was just going into feeding this addiction. Yeah. So I go two or three days without, without food. Um, and, yeah, and then I just sort of reached the stage was like, oh, I can't get any more credit i can't get any more credit cards or loans or anything um i'm tapped out and i've now got all this debt that i need to repay and honestly my mental health which wasn't great at the time anyway just yeah. absolutely plummeted i was just so anxious so depressed i just i couldn't do anything i had i couldn't see any way out of it at all i thought this is like you know i did, I did rock bottom beyond rock bottom really i was just you know i was ready to end it all christ i mean it doesn't even bear thinking about uh that you could get to that amount of of debt in you said weeks yeah oh yeah less than def, two to three weeks at most it was that's uh, crazy is this yeah. debt that's is this like on credit cards and loans or is this so debt this credit with cards, the companies loans. that you're betting with yeah, so it was all credit cards and loans um, that that was, yeah. Uh, so all money owed to uh, banking corporations, it's which, uh, yeah. Uh, that must have, like you said, that must have put you in a in a really bad place. I mean, it doesn't bear thinking about, does it? Yeah, oh, I I just felt like I'd, I'd ruined my life. I'd, um, you know, I'd... I'd, I was so upset. I thought I just destroyed everything. I had nothing more to live for. I was thinking I'm going to lose my house. I'm going to lose, you know, because I was yeah. barely able to keep on top of the mortgage payments. Um, 
I thought my car was going to be taken because you know I had finance yeah. on that. I thought I thought everything was going to uh, go and everything that I had worked towards and built over the previous you know uh, obviously I'm only 21, but over the previous 15 years of me uh, my life, yeah. uh, slightly more actually at that stage uh, was gone up in smoke just over a, a you know a mad period of a couple of weeks where I was just I was just totally in the grip of this yeah. horrendous addiction. What was your um, motivation at the time for gambling? Was it like an addictive personality? Were you, were you doing it to try and raise money for something? Well, I, I, first, I first got into it as a, a tie hustle because I thought, I've just got this car loan. I want to pay that off, you know, in a year. So I'll do something to, to earn the money to, to pay it off on, on the side. Didn't know anything about reselling or anything at the time because um, that would have been a much better healthier one and better one for me to choose but i'd seen a lot about this matched betting i knew a few people were doing yeah. it and making good money from it so um i thought we'll get into that see how it goes and like i said that was going going well the first sort of couple of months of doing that i was um i was making about you know one to two thousand pounds uh that i'd made mm. from it that was all ready to you know i was gonna yeah. get all the money to get it and then pay off me, me car loan in one go yeah but, uh, yeah, so getting into debt, basically, then made me think about ways to get out of it quickly. Um, but I think the realisation I come to is that once you're in it, actually, it's quite really difficult to uh, to get out of that position. It's funny you mentioned match betting, and you're saying it was like six years ago. Now, that kind of ties in. I think there must have been a real sort of, uptake in match betting around that time because i also got into match betting um that would have been what 2018 ish 2017 18 it was around that time i it, this is a little story that uh, how i did match betting around that time i um i broke my toe and dislocated my toe at home i, I fell down the stairs booted the banister, broke my toe, dislocated it. And it put me off work for uh, a little while. And during that time, I actually found match betting while I was, you know, laid up. I wasn't really a serious reseller at that point. Um, and um, I think it was like a, a YouTube advert or something, or someone made a YouTube video on how to do it. It's one of these where you would search how to make money at home or something like that. And um, I found it and I did it for a little while, probably made about somewhere between like 600 and a thousand pound. But with the match betting, it starts off as being like almost risk free because you are yeah. playing bets off against each other. And that's how it kind of works. So it, it's it's relatively risk free. But anyone who tells you that it's risk free is, is lying because yeah. um, there comes a point when you run out of of um sites to use and 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 free bets that you get given and then when they start when you get like part way through the program of match betting that you follow it comes to a point when you they send you on to roulette and and they 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 take you through this process of do it in this way bet on this bet on this bet on this bet on this but it gets to a point when you, when you start doing that, it is not risk free anymore, and you can get dragged right into a rabbit hole. And that's when I came out because I'm not a big risk taker, and I don't have like an addictive personality. I don't think either. So um, that's when I came out. But I guess for you, did that give you a taste of that's, that, what you that's, could get? Yeah, that's when I got sucked in. I remember once doing the relay and being about four thousand pounds up. Yeah, which, you know, huge amount of money. And then it just, um, uh, and I did the same bet a hundred times in a row that should have, in that hundred times, have come through. You know, mathematically, it's practically impossible for it to not. But I can't prove this, but I think the site I was using must have been rigged in some way. Oh, because, you know, nobody has that bad luck, really. And it just wiped it all out. Um, mm. So, so and then I was just like, and that's the point. Then I was like, I've just lost four grand. And instead of thinking to yourself, okay, you need to stop doing that, you've just lost four grand. Yeah. 
I was like, right, I need to go I back on to it and make that, make that money back. Yeah. And I was just stuck That's in it. it. And I, I get addicted to things anyway. I'm autistic, so I get obsessed with things for short-term yeah. periods. Uh, a lot, uh, in a similar way to people with ADHD do. And then um, once that obsession is burned out, it's pretty much done for me. I might come back occasionally to it like a year or two later thinking, oh, I enjoyed doing that, but the enjoyment isn't there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so just for that short period of time, it was all I could think about. I was completely obsessed with it and I was uh, just losing money hand over f- fist. I was like the worst gambler ever. <laughs> it's, you know, it's tantamount, you know, to you that you uh, you can smile about it to a certain degree. But I, I expect at the time, obviously, you said that uh, once you'd realised how far you'd gone, it, it's not good, is it? Yeah, I, I couldn't see uh, a way out. Uh, for I've got no hope of... Uh, ever repaying this this debt and i thought i'm gonna have to go back and live with your mum and the shame and embarrassment of that how do you face your family Mm. after you've done something like that um but you've got to do it because you're never gonna get yourself out of position unless you admit that you've got a problem and that you need help and support with it and that was the that was the first thing i did and i reached that stage i was like right I knew before from suffering from mental health problems that if I don't acknowledge them and I don't share them and I'm not open about it, it gets worse. Whereas if I actually talk about it, it will nine times out of 10 get better. So I use that, that learning, that, that knowledge, that experience I'd gained before in the past to say, actually, do you know what? I was going to say to people, I've lost thousands of thousands of pounds here gambling um because otherwise i would have just carried on but admitting yeah. that and taking that first step which really hard to do because i felt like i just admitted that i basically failed at life um mm. which i hadn't uh, i just had a bit of an addiction that i was able to get sorted but um but but yeah just taking that first step that was the biggest thing and then the next thing was okay i i've lost this money I that people are going, oh, just declare yourself bankrupt and whatever. And right. I was like, no, this is money I've lost. I want to um I don't want to mess up my life by having a bankruptcy or an IVA or anything. You know, I want to repay it. You know, I want to work towards repaying that. I want to take ownership of it and 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 sort it out. Yeah. So that's what I did. I started looking at ways to to make extra income that didn't involve match betting or anything like that. Um that they were more sort of uh, sustainable, and here I am a few years later. So you try. I, I noticed in your first video on your YouTube channel, you mentioned that you tried a few things like um, uh, paid surveys, mystery shopping, stuff like that. I was doing and- every online opportunity for earning money that you could think of. So I started yeah. a YouTube channel. I started a blog. Um, I was doing paid surveys, which, to to be honest, you know, you can make um, people knocking, but you can make um, some some okay money from them if it's just something you're doing, sat on your phone in the bath or whatever, when you're not you're not doing anything else anyway. So I still do those now to bring in um, a few extra quid a month. Um, Mystery shopping was a a big one for me. I did. uh, I was probably the biggest mystery shopper in North Wales. Um, I was earning thousand pounds a month from doing that wow but i I was having to to travel to a lot of places there basically Mm. there wasn't really anyone else doing mystery shopping around here at the time so the opportunity companies would ring me up and go we need to mystery shop so and so place we'll give you a hundred quid to do it and pay your fuel and it might be you know 30 40 miles away so i'd go there i'd get a hundred quid i'd get a free meal or whatever it was i'd come back and that was great. I was, you know, making good money, but it was just the, the time I was losing doing that. You know, I'd I'd have to the, the travel on there and back. I couldn't do anything else. And I was just basically working, going and doing a mystery shop, getting home, might be 10, 11 o'clock at night. And then I'd be doing surveys and whatever else until two o'clock in the morning. 
and I'd be waking up at seven the next day for work. I was just, you know, I was burning out. I was exhausted. Yeah. So, yeah. so, and what, but one thing that I was doing was I wasn't putting all the money into paying off my debt because I was thinking to myself, keep some of this money back because you might identify another opportunity which you need money for to fund um because i knew it wasn't going to be sustainable in the long term and yeah if anyone else had signed up to the mystery shopping in the area then all those pay payouts i was getting would have just reduced because they would have oh. just taken it and it, it happened with a couple of companies that all of a sudden they the work had dried up so it wasn't dependable income yeah um so uh so i was looking for other opportunities all the time to to make money and uh i started watching a video on youtube about depression that uh nick hills did many years ago uh, and some okay. of the struggles he was having i didn't know he was a reseller didn't know anything what that was about but i watched that for i enjoying this content so i started watching uh a bit more of his videos which are all reselling focused Right, and a year or two before, before I got into that, I'd been buying cars on eBay at auction, and then selling them for buy it now and making you know one, two, three hundred quid. Okay, uh, on some sales. I think the best one I did was I made a thousand pounds, and on others I'd I'd be losing money because the just the the car turned out to be knackered or not as described, and you can't actually right. return a car on ebay hmm. in the same way that you could return an item of clothing that you bought yeah true um so it's like you know i was making a little bit of money from it a little bit of loss and everything but i was basically reselling um without realizing it but reselling stuff that i wouldn't touch now don't don't resell cars is my top hmm. tip by the way because you, you you know you could you unless can you know what you're doing and then you can probably yeah. do all right yeah. Uh, How did the reselling moment. sort of journey start? Then you saw one of Nick's videos, which where a lot of people started reselling. Yeah. And w what was like? Can you remember like your first steps into like being a reseller? Yeah. Well, I had I had a thousand pounds saved up from the mystery shopping. Uh, my debts were all being covered from it, and with the mystery shopping, as I was travelling out to different areas, you know, I was going to a lot of places that had charity shops that were there so i'm walking past them and um i'd spent like a day or two watching nick's videos just been watching them i think a lot of people do that when they first get into it yeah and i was seeing stuff in the shops that he'd sold and shown on his videos so i started just buying them as i was going past um and eventually i had like this you know car full of stuff so i thought right just list it on eBay. I just spent about probably about 150 quid, uh, maybe a bit more on stock that I picked up in all these charity shops. I don't mean to any car boots, anything like that. It's just all from the charity shops. And I just started listing them on eBay. I'd set up a business account for some reason at the time. Uh, I don't know why. For most new sellers, when you set up an eBay account, you get like a maximum of 10 listings or something. Yeah, you get I a limit, to, don't you? Yeah, I got 200 listings from the off. So I was able to list everything, um, or nearly everything. I think I had a limit of I had two hundred listings, but a limit of a thousand pounds of stock. Okay. So I had about two rands worth of listed value. So I put uh, half the stuff on, and then it started selling, um, and then the money's coming in. I think, oh, it's doing all right. So then I started re reinvesting. I didn't take any money from that because I was still doing the mystery shopping, yeah, using the money to pay off my debts. So I was just constantly reinvesting. For about a year um, before I took anything out of the business, um, and I was just putting all the money eBay was making back into it, and it was just growing and growing, and I was getting more and more stock. And I was, you know, after a year, I was up to seven or eight hundred items listed, and I was getting a storage unit because um, right. it was just like it was just expanding bigger and bigger. And I was like, at the stage, was like, actually. I don't need to do the mystery shopping anymore. That was starting to dry up anyway. I was going, yeah. I was already getting about five or 600 quid a month from it. Um, I was like, right, I'm going to stop doing that. I got to focus on the eBay. And that's what I did from then onwards. Um, Were you solely just, on eBay? 
Yeah, uh, for, for, well, I, I did do a lot on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, um, I was I was I had a, a garage that was empty at the time, so I was by I was get picking up furniture for free from Facebook Marketplace or Gumtree or Free Cycle, and I was listing that on back on Facebook Marketplace or on eBay as collection only. So I'd been picking up a sofa for like free, selling it for fifty quid or a bed yeah. the same, but. Okay. So, you know, I was making, like, huge profits on it. But then my back started playing up, and I was like, this is no fun. Stop stop, stop picking up big and bulky stuff. Um, so I, so then I moved into doing TVs, and I think there's an article on my website about this. I started buying TVs on eBay auction, collection only, 10, 15 quid, and I'd be selling them. What, like the, the CRT uh, ones? Like the, the game? No, 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 no. Normal. Just normal TVs. Like, yeah, just like the TV that you would sit and watch in your, your front room. Okay. You know, I had certain criteria I was looking for. I had to have free view built in. You know, I had to be a, a flat screen and all this because I knew what the – I had to have HDMI because I knew the features that would people were looking for, and I would just keyword my Facebook and my eBay listings to target that. And, I'd put, again, I'd put them in collection only. There was no way I was shipping any of it. Yeah. And I'd you know, get a TV on – somebody put an auction, £10 start, and quite very, very, very rarely did I have any competition for it. So I'd, you know, I'd often get this stuff for the maiden, maiden bid, and I'd be selling that, that on, and that that did really well. Uh, I was the biggest supplier of secondhand TVs in the area. People were just messaging me on Facebook, going, "Oh, have you got a? Can you get a TV for me?" And then I started going to the charity shops and getting TVs from there that they had, and I had a a bit of a, a deal in place if they got a TV in, you know, I would, I would give them money for it. They put it aside for me. So I was flipping TVs for it for a year and making really good money from it. And then uh, I don't know why I just, all of a sudden, I think I just got to a stage where I was fed up of driving around and dropping TVs off and sourcing them. So I just, lost interest in that and I, I sort of stopped doing it. i still got about five tvs at the minute and i've never got around to to listing but that was that was a really good earner um and Did I you, were you doing car boot that. sales at this point as well andrew or were you just yeah, not really and stuff? not really i I'm, i've never been a fan well i love car boot sales but i've never been a fan of getting up in the morning mm. and the ones around here well, you've, you've you've seen Chirk. That starts at five o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah, it's I, crazy, isn't it? Me, not going to no, see thanks. me at five o'clock in the morning. I didn't, I didn't particularly like getting there. Get, I've only been to Chirk once. I didn't particularly like being there in the in the pitch black and freezing cold. And yeah, uh, it's it's, it's not fun. I did, I did start after a couple of years though, because the charity shop started to get uh, a bit more pricey, and yeah. there were a lot more. I started to see a lot more resellers out and about in them. So yeah, it's all these YouTube videos, these YouTubers yeah. making videos, just ruining it for, you know, creating uh, competition. And I, I probably didn't help doing videos myself of uh, all the stuff I was getting in the local charity shops. Like, I'd pick up stuff. I'd do a video on it, like, that afternoon. Um, so so uh, I thought, I need to start going to the car boots and picking stuff up. So then every Sunday I used to drive to uh just to start off in Chirk. Then I used to drive to Mark Wheel car boot, which is in Maxim, oh, and yeah. then I'd drive to Chester car boot to the hospital there. And I'd fill the car between the three of them. And I was just reaching the stage where I was just getting more and more stuff and I wasn't having the time to list it because I was working full time. So my storage was getting bigger and bigger. And um I'm still in that position now where I've got like I've got stuff I picked up three or four years ago that I've I've not listed, and I just pull it out of a box and I go, oh, I've not listed that, and then I list it and I find out it's, it's like worth even more than it was when I sourced it, which is great. Yeah, stuff does stuff does appreciate uh, because you know I was picking up stuff that was rare at the time, and it's only got rarer since. There is a fine line though, Andrew, isn't there, between sort of reselling and and hoarding when you when yeah. you start going over the line of you're buying way, way more stuff than what you yeah. can ever list yourself right. as a as a one man band, you know. Uh, have you found that? Oh, definitely. When when the pandemic hit, 
that's when I went over that line into basically hoarding because right. I mean there was a logic to it because at the time we didn't know whether we were going to be able to get stock for when we were going to get stock when shops were going to reopen stuff would reopen and be another lockdown so yeah. I was just every opportunity I was going out and filling the yeah. car car boots were banned in Wales as well so and the, the one in Chester stopped it's never come back because that was at the hospital so they didn't obviously didn't want people coming to the the hospital um so i but i also got into uh i had a friend um who set up a wholesale a vintage wholesale business so he was doing me um good deals on on wholesale stuff so i was ordering a lot from him and then i started trying out other wholesalers and because i was doing youtube videos you know they were writing out to me going oh you know do you, do you want to buy from us? Um, I'll give you a discount if you promote the stuff or whatever. Um, and I was like, well, I'll only promote it if it's any good, but feel free to send it and, and I'll have a look and I'll do a video on it. And if, if yeah. it's crap, I'll say it's crap on the video because, you know, we need to be honest about these things. Um, but that then meant so all of a sudden I was getting like literally del deliveries of stuff coming every day. So I, I, I ended up having to rent an office. Um, I remember that, office. yeah. That office was great. Um, I regret not being there uh, still, to be honest, because it was just, like, massive. You've moved uh, about a lot, though, haven't you? You've shifted your business into, like, you went from a... Was it a shipping container first, then you went to an I had, office? I had a storage unit first, just, like, in the middle of a, you know... A, a big unit. Like, a, like the equivalent of a big yellow sort of place. Yeah. That's it, yeah. Yeah, I had uh, something in there, and, and then I filled that. Um, so then I got a shipping container from them, which was which was great. It was twice the size, and it was nearly half the price. So I got that, and then I was like, actually, I quite fancy the idea of having uh, somewhere that I can work from as well as store the stock. Yeah. So I got what I called the cow shed after that. Yeah, I remember which that. Which was this, yeah. It, oh, that was a disaster. That place. It was. It was. It would have been great. Um, it was a big unit with an office upstairs. Um, yeah. But it had a slight issue of getting flooded uh, every time it <laughs> rained. That's not great when you've got stock. No. So um, basically, they just had no drainage. If they just put a drain right. in front of the doors, it would have been absolutely fine. Um. But because it didn't have that, it just the water would just come in under the doors. So um, I had to get I had to get out of it, um, and I went back to a forty foot container, uh, filled that, and then I thought, well, I'm still I still haven't got somewhere that I can work from. So I got a, a different container that had power and lighting, and I started working from there. And then I realised that those things get bloody cold. Mm -hmm. um so i moved to the office and uh, i'd still be in the office now but i had uh i had a bit of legal trouble uh where i was falsely accused of something um that i had to defend myself against uh so i had to i had to cut costs so i could afford to to pay for a solicitor um i left the office and went to where i am now which is i got a couple of units right next to each other don't cost a huge amount um i don't work from there anymore i work from home now but I'm happy working from home now as I've got older and I can't be bothered traveling anywhere. Um, so I've, I've been in these two units for nearly three years now. That's the longest period that you've ever been somewhere, isn't it? Because yeah. considering you've only really been sort of, I say only, it's still a long time, sort of five years or so, isn't it, that you've been reselling for? But um, just a reminder to everybody listening that you actually have a pretty uh what would you say stressful or i'd say stressful. high responsibility job yeah you know where you can be asked to do much more than your average number of hours mm. and you're doing that and you're doing all this stuff you're moving about your business you're getting containers and offices and you're reselling and your house is filling up with stuff it's there's a lot going on there is uh and um uh, work is calmer now but if you, every major crisis we face, so Ukraine, uh, Operation Picnic, 
put in the evacuation of Afghanistan, COVID, various others as mm. well. I've had to get stuck in with those. So I've been doing, so there have been times where I've been like doing 20 hours a day, seven days a week on that. And I've still got to get my eBay orders out. Yeah. Listing wasn't happening, obviously, doing that. Um, but I kept up my uh, eBay you orders. Kept up but... all your sales and your orders and your dispatch times yeah. and stuff. Yeah. How um, did you find, like, during this period of, of you reselling and, and um, paying off debts and stuff, how did you find, like, the – how did you manage, like, the, the paying off your debt part of your profit and your reinvesting? So – did you just wait and see what you weren't in a month or did you try and pay off a set amount every month? I, I had a, I set up with a company called step change. He put me on something called a debt management plan okay. where basically uh, they took, they spoke to all of my debtors and agreed a 0% interest uh, with them. So they just froze all the interest on everything. And then they agreed a set amount based on my income, from uh from work that i would pay uh towards the debts each each month and then uh they were quite happy for people to do side hustles and they didn't regard that as income as such yeah so what i would say to them at the end of every month is oh i've, I've earned a bit extra from a side hustle here's an extra two three four hundred quid whatever it is yeah and then they would just take that payment and distribute it out amongst all the debtors. Okay. So I was basically uh, paying the minimum amount I could, but then overpaying each month. Yeah. Um, and that just uh, helped massively because I think when I set on the debt management plan, it was it was going to take me like, might have been over 10 years to pay it off. Yeah. Uh, but each year it was just going down and down and down the amount I had to pay. Um, I did have a, period when i as, as mentioned having having to to fight a legal battle where i was just paying the minimum um so that that did uh, set you back a little bit but um as soon as that was sorted it was just again back to overpaying it and um my car loan that i had i paid that uh, a year early so then that meant all the money that was going towards that could go towards my debt as well so um it, it, there were times where like i couldn't make um stuff balance and i didn't really have enough to make me minimum spend um because other costs happen when you own a house you know something goes wrong you got to go and yeah. fix it whether so there were times where i actually had to borrow money to just to get through the month but then because i had the money from ebay you know at some point coming along I would pay that off and then go back to overpaid on the original. I had a cut, I took out a cut when PayPal working capital was a thing. Um, I took out a PayPal working capital, uh, but but don't tell PayPal this, but I, I used it straight to pay off debt, even though the debt was interest free. So theoretically, okay. I was paying interest to PayPal. It just gave me a bit of breathing room where I could say, Oh, I've, I've yeah. met me. Uh, the payments for this month i don't need to to worry um so yeah. i did things like that and i did the same again with uh new lend uh i took some money from them and uh I may have uh redistributed some money towards other costs um but uh yeah uh can't do that anymore now because i'm a limited company but at the time i was a sole trader so it was yeah, fair a bit enough. easier. This is not financial advice, by the way, folks. No. Don't ever do anything like that. Um, keep your business money and your personal money separate. Don't try not to do that, guys. You 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 got to be very confident of of uh, your fans. Sean on YouTube, who's watching live at the moment, says, uh, "Does Andrew have any advice on how he manages it all, having a full time job as well as an equivalent of a full time reselling?" We kind of covered it yeah, a little bit. I, I take the same. I mean, what what I do is I take the same approach in work as I do to reselling. So I set myself objectives or targets about what I want to do. Um, so I have a you know I'll have a daily listing target. I'll have um, a spend target for how much I want to spend on stock each month, 
uh, which mm. usually gets breached, but it only gets breached <laughs> if I've had a good a good month. Um, and I just, you know, I have, uh, I I used to do and work roles slightly change. I used to do a lot of project plans as well. So I used to have, like, I would plan everything I needed to do, you know, for the week. And then I just make time to do it. I, sometimes there'd be, you know, things would come up and I wouldn't do it, but that that's fine yeah. because what I always used to do as well. Say I have a target to list 50 items in a week. Um, it's, it's higher now, but back then it used to be 50 items a week. Um, I would actually list 60 items. So if the next week I only did 40, it didn't matter to me because I'd done 10 more the week before anyway. So I would, yeah. I would balance it out across the month that way. Uh, and I guess as well, it's, um, it's like you, you've got a full-time job. That's your priority is your full-time yeah. job. You don't want that yeah. to, anything to happen to yeah. that. So with the reselling, like when I was part-time, I started off part-time reselling. The reselling was always the flexible element of, of the things that you, you know, you could pick that up and put it back down again. So I guess that that's part, part of the managing would have been Big that time. you could, you could leave the non-essential stuff of reselling, yeah. you know, if your job got too busy. Uh, exactly that. Yeah. They basically, I, you know, you've got to prioritize it. I think Dave Keith would have came on here today, some good talk about time management. I learned a lot from that, that podcast, but you've got to, prioritize the activity so you've always got to do so any, anything that affects your metrics on whatever selling platform you are that's got to be your first priority because you don't want to have defects building up on ebay so you've got to get your shipping on time yeah but you know make sure it's tracked as well i've seen advice from people saying don't track it that's the worst thing you can do because you do oh, need God, to track yeah. it so getting the shipping done that's the, the first priority once that's out the way you got to think about what what earns the money which is the the listing and the sourcing i've got me sourcing to the stage now where uh well i don't actually need to source because i've got so much stuff anyway i was gonna but say enjoy... source I, from I, your I, own I, stock yeah. <laughs> but i enjoy and sometimes i will do that um and i will just pull stuff out so last september i don't really have time to go out so i was just I, I listed about 600 things that were just in my unit but um, if you haven't got that backlog, what you've got to do is build contacts. You, you don't want to be spending 10, 12 hours going out sourcing. You want to be able to do it within a, a couple of hours and know you're going to get good stuff. So I've spent a lot of time building relationships and, and investing in, in contacts across house clearances and across charity shops so that I don't have to spend more than an hour or two a week on sourcing. They will. Yeah. They basically will... They will pick stuff for me and then I'll just turn up, go through it, say what I want. And if I don't want, get you know, you, out for sale. You've got to make the best use of your time, haven't you? And it, it, that's a good way to do it. Um, when you first started reselling, um, was your intention to do as much as you could to repay your debts and then quit and just go back to a, like your normal job and, and having your free time? Or was this like a, a much longer term plan? Uh, well, I had a, my plans have changed quite considerably, to be honest. When I first started doing it, I just saw it as a means to pay off my debts. Exactly as you say, get my debt paid off. And then once that was done, I would probably not but i just go and enjoy me life and yeah you know, do the stuff that i'd not been able to do because i'd been prioritizing clearing debt um as i got into it and started building uh you know a, a proper business from it i thought actually i quite fancy doing this full time and then the pandemic hit and my job changed and all of a sudden i was really enjoying the work i was doing so then it was Would like you have left uh, your government job. Oh, before the pandemic, definitely. I hated it. I was not. not really? uh, oh, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah. No. So they, that's why I got one of the reasons behind getting the office um, was so that I could eventually quit work and have a, a base to work from. Um, and I was going to massively ramp up the reselling. But, but yeah, I really started enjoying work and I realized that actually 
I want to stay doing that for a few few more years. So the reselling uh, didn't become as much of a priority then. Um, but then um, the last year, I'm still enjoying work, but I'm noticing the the physical uh, and mental demands that it's it's putting on me now mm. as I'm getting a bit older and um, <laughs> and I'm I'm not getting the enjoyment that I was from it. Um, so I have reached the stage now where I'm like, right, five years time now when I when I hit forty five, I want to be in a position where I can say I don't need to work anymore. I then have that choice as to whether or not I work or whether I do reselling. And even then, you know, I want to be in a position where the reselling could just be part time if it needed to be. Um, because I paid off 60 grand in five years. Um, so now that I've got actual money coming in, if you think about it in reselling, particularly with Amazon, which we'll talk about in a bit, the more money you've got to invest in it and in yourself and what you're doing, the more money yeah. you can make. So yeah. now I've got this extra capital that. There's no point in being in a bank because even though interest rates are good at the minute, I can make more money reselling. Yeah. So I can I could snowball the business and just grow it. But I've got to look at ways that I can grow it while working uh full time because you know I'm I'm very committed to my job, you know, get a lot of rewards for it. So I uh I've seen that. I, I want to do do yeah. you worry about leaving your job, the security of it? You you know, you've no doubt got a decent pension there and do you worry uh, about all that kind of stuff? Your, your sick pay, your holiday pay? Absolutely. So I've started my own private pension now. I've got mm. savings and investments that I'm building up, um, putting money into each month as well, so that I've got that as a backup. And I plan um, – I started started up a new business venture this year on, on Amazon, uh, selling on there, which is going good. I just looked at my profit figures for the last – month today and it's over after fees after everything that i've paid out subscriptions to software and stuff it's over 700 quid and i've done basically very little for that compared to how much i would do on ebay to put into yeah. it so uh if i can keep on growing that in the, the same way then hopefully by the end of the year that will you know be double that mm that's a full-time income just from one platform, eBay on yeah. top. I want to reinvest those profits half into growing the business, but the other half I'm going to put aside and start buying property okay. and renting out, becoming a slumlord, uh, basically. Um, but, yeah, buying property and, and renting that out uh, so that I have just another source of income coming in. And then, because um, I'm a great believer in having everything I've learned over the last few years is have multiple income streams, multiple in. sources of income. Yeah, I think it is really, really important. Even if a, even if some of them are only very small, it doesn't matter. I think you know everything adds up, and yes. you know, I I just think yeah, you know, if you can work out and have ten, and it sounds like a lot to some people, but if you can have ten sources of income, even if some of them are only relatively small. I just think it, it it helps smooth out the bumps when some platforms are not performing very well and others are performing good. If you've got ten different incomes coming in, and that's just an arbitrary number I just made. You know, I just made that up. But you know, it, it helps smooth out the bumps of a of a roller coaster of that is reselling. Yeah. yeah, I would I would always say to people from what I've learned, don't just rely on ebay alone for income yeah if that's your main platform or amazon if that's your main platform or depop or whatever it may be because there will be glitches that happen on that platform there might be media articles that all of a sudden mean that it gets cancelled effectively um depop's a good example i used to do really well from depop um mm. i would i would get you know i was one of the top you know, when they send you that sort of month, that weekly performance. I remember you sharing that, you, that you'd you hit that top one, you know, where they, they focus yeah. you on the front page and stuff, you know, when when people are searching and whatnot. 
I was doing really well and was building a business, building a brand. I was getting repeat custom. And then Etsy took deep off over it. And I don't know what they did, but they just, all of a sudden, the algorithm wasn't uh, promoting my listings as much anymore. And sales were just, just dried up almost overnight. And so, um, so I just closed that aspect of the business because it was like the time I'm putting into it, I'm not seeing the returns yeah. from it. So I just, yeah. I just cut it. Um, eBay is, has been uh, a good source of income, but I'm finding even now, compared to the amount of listings and stuff I used to have to put up two, three years ago, I have to put a lot more stuff mm. up now than I did. So it's, it's. I can see that um, that it's getting a bit. Um, not Do you think that's down to the competition out there with other platforms? I, I think there is competition from other platforms but i also you know we've got to recognize people just have less money mm. than they had um uh two or three years ago so we're always gonna to have to put more effort in to to get the money that's out there because there's, there's less of it so i think that definitely plays a part I think ebay is still a, a beast still a colossus yeah of course um, it's still uh, – people talk about Vinted taking market share from it on clothes. And, you know, you can do well selling clothes on Vinted as a, a private individual. Um, but eBay sponsors Love Island, and every time that comes up on Love Island, people are going on eBay and buying clothes. Mm. Uh, that that partnership has meant that e eBay is the biggest uh, second-hand clothing seller in the UK now. Yeah. Um, so they, just, just from sponsoring Love Island – so they have they have wiped the floor with Depop and anything else that that that's out. In fact, actually, that's part of why Depop isn't so good anymore. So, and that's the thing when you've got a company like eBay with that much marketing power, all that all you've got all they've got to do is find a brand that they can mm. get behind, and they'll get sales. So now they've gone from being threatened. By clothing, uh, by by the clothing platforms, to being actually regaining all that market share and now having a bigger market share than they ever did. Mm, true. And people don't realise it. I see this on the Facebook groups, like, "Oh, the Vint is much better. eBay's dead." But no, it's not. You just actually have to look at the statistics that are out there, yeah. and 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 you can see you do you know, what not will 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 cause some problems for it because there's a lot of people on there. Yourself in there, selling, selling a lot of uh, stuff on uh, auction. So I think that will take the auction share from eBay. Um, Unless, of course, eBay, eBay decide to get their finger out and re yeah. release their own live platform. Like they're testing it in the US at the minute, like we've we've said previously. But I'd love to see that come to the UK because at the moment, what not uh, are, do are doing well, but they're not. They're almost falling into the Poshmark trap whereby they are circulating their own advertising within themselves and not, yeah. they should be plastering themselves on TV, um, primetime TV like Vinted did. That's how Vinted have got to where they are now. But they're not doing that yet. And if they don't, eBay are going to come in, they're going to go live selling and they're going to blow whatnot out of the water. Because uh, at the minute, it's, it's I was talking in Z's chat earlier that, you know, it's probably 90% resellers who are buying on whatnot from fellow yeah, resellers yeah, which is yeah, fine which is, which is great they're using credit they're buying to resell themselves which is absolutely fine i've done it myself i still do it but that it's not really sustainable for for sellers on whatnot because you're not getting the the amounts that you need to get to to run the platform but ebay come along they've got the ready-made audience not only resellers on ebay but also joe public customers who are going to get directed to those live streams. And you you might start seeing more realistic prices. Even if it's half the price of an item that you've got listed on eBay, it's still going to achieve more than what it would on whatnot. So it'd be interesting to see if that does happen. But I, I think, think I think um, just going back to our chat, um, I think you should be really proud of yourself for, for how you've managed to get yourself out of that Um that debt and you've worked so hard to to do it and what i've seen being a friend for you know the majority of that time uh is is how you've evolved your business constantly you know you've, you've made a lot of changes 
Yeah. Uh, but also you've moved from eBay to Depop and other platforms. You're now on Amazon. You're testing that out. Uh, you've got a limited company. This is These are all the evolutions of your business, which are going to help make it even better sort of going into the future. And, you know, it might mean that you can quit your day job and, and do something a little bit more passive. You know, it's it's great. That's the, that, that's the critical thing. I think you, you, you've got to evolve. I've, see, I've seen, as, as I'm sure you will have as well, a lot on social media from, from people who, are struggling but they don't change keep trying to do this the same thing over and over again which is like yeah the definition of insanity um so what i the stuff i sell now on ebay i wouldn't have touched three or four years ago and i i'm pretty sure the stuff i'll be selling on ebay in three or four years from now will be totally different to what i sell now because you've got to follow what you've got to follow where the money is where the demand is although i i don't try to do that many clothing even though i know the demand is there for it just because i just i just i can't get any enjoyment from all destroying <laughs> it is but i mean it, it is where the majority of the money is that, that's what yeah. i think and when i moved into clothing on ebay you know it it changed my business overnight yeah. it you know it doubled my average sale price and uh you know money was coming in much more than what it was before and um you know, I've I've evolved a fair bit, although I've not evolved as much as you have. But I um I've certainly changed like the stuff I was picking up at the beginning. I do do still pick up some things, but now, you know, I I I try now not to I want to work smarter than what I did at the start. You know, I'd rather buy I'd rather pay up for stuff now and have higher sales prices than buy the buy the one pound items and sell them for five pound you know that's that's where i am now and it seems to be working you know at the moment i've got like i've only got like 800 listings on ebay and that's very very low for me that's that's like winding back the clock three or four years um i've always had a minimum of like 1500 listings but i've kind of trimmed it down higher value more desirable stuff and that's difficult to do you know but it's seems to be working but, to a de to a degree it's all about the sell through rate as yeah. well if you put stuff up there that sells mine's a bit different because now i'm going for stuff where i'm the only seller so it might take mm. six or seven months to sell but uh when it does no competition yeah and, and potentially the, no fees for promoting uh, and the, the um price uh i get is one that i've named myself yeah basically fair enough. um you know my my cost of goods has always been very low you know i don't like spending more than a pound on something uh unless unless i know it's gonna sell uh yeah. for a good markup but doing amazon has also taught me about the stuff i'm selling now on ebay this year i would never have touched last year because i've seen how well it's doing on amazon and now I'm looking at eBay at the same time as I'm picking something up and I'm going, Oh, hang on a second. Actually I can get slightly more profit on eBay. So I'm putting it on there. So I've sold, I saw the indigestion tablets on eBay the other week. <laughs> um, so there's, there's, yeah, there's, there's opportunities to change and evolve your business at the minute. My biggest thought is if I keep on going as I am, I'm going to hit fat registration. Mm. Uh, and, and which I could have obviously raised 90,000 now, so that give me about an extra week. But mm -hmm. um, I am uh, looking now, therefore, right, I'd rather source stuff that is uh, zero rated for that. So, books, which I've already been doing for the last couple of years anyway, and food and grocery might mm. become the, the biggest categories that I'm in going forward rather than media which has been a sort of staple for me for years now what do you think would well, is an overriding question for you andrew what do you think where do you think you'd be now if you hadn't found reselling at that moment uh i probably would be uh homeless and destitute um no i think i would have whatever i would have done i would have ended up paying it off 
I yeah. think it would have just taken me a lot longer. A lot longer. Uh, you know, because I, you know, when I get behind something, I get behind it, and I was behind early money. I was already clearing the debt through doing the mystery shopping, etc. Mm. So I would have just been doing something different. But I don't think I would have made much money, as much money, and been able to clear as much debt. I don't think I would have had uh, a business behind me that I can grow, and I don't think I would have made the, the friendships and the relationships that I've True. built. Everything well. happens for a reason, right? And even yeah. the bad stuff, you can take good out of. Because look at where it's led you. You know that exactly. you got you ran into some trouble, you sorted it out, but you found a new community, you found a new business, yeah. you found something that that could take you into your retirement. That's amazing. I, I think the the trick with reselling is whatever platform you do it on, it helps you break that income trap where if you're getting a, a salary from work mm. that's all the money you're going to get for the month yeah but if you're getting a salary from work and doing reselling as well well actually you could be getting a lot more money every month and you you're in charge of your own destiny um the, the best thing i ever did was getting into debt um probably not the amount but certainly by getting into debt and discovering reselling that's changed my life mm. totally how does it feel having paid off that money because That's when great. you when yeah. you look at it on paper it's a huge amount of money and when you're getting that bill or that statement from the the company about how much you owe it's it's not nice is it no how does no, it feel no. now oh it's just such a relief when it was done i was just like i was planning out all the things that i'd not done uh that i could do now uh, none of which i've actually done because um it turns out it's a, one thing is it turns out that when you're in debt, the things you want to do aren't actually the things that you want to do when you come out of it. Because having come yeah. out of it now, the things I want to do now is, is grow my business, which I, I thought I would probably stop when I first started. Yeah. Uh, I want to move to the coast um, and start a new life there. Whereas if you'd asked me two or three years ago, I'd have been like, oh, right, I want to go and, you know, go on this holiday or, which I don't even enjoy, like holidays. Um, or I want to go and buy a, you know, a fancy car and all this kind of stuff, um, which and now I've bought a van instead. So <laughs> your priorities do change uh, and your yeah. understanding of money and what it can do for you changes I think a lot that as well. helps. As you grow older, that happens anyway. I think I think you appreciate different things as you grow older. Definitely for me, sort of, the difference in my mindset now in my 40s than what it was in my 20s is a million miles away. Like, I, I, I want to earn nice money and have nice things and go on nice holidays, but it's nowhere near what it was when I was in my 20s. Now, I'm, I would rather, like, spend as much time as i can with bell the wife and, yeah. and stuff like that and spend quality time because you know things happens in life you know you lose people and you think to yourself you know we're only here for a a, a blink of an eye we're, you know we're a speck of dust and we're gone in no time so uh, i don't want to spend 24 hours a day wor working my ass off it's just not it's not what i want i would rather work as much as i need have a little bit over and and the rest of the time make make memories and go and experience life because before we know it we'll we won't be able to we won't be in a position yeah. to very true um that's another thing as well through reselling i've got to go to places and see people that i would have never have seen an experience you know i go to hitchin every year uh, it's a part of the country i would never go to otherwise uh, next weekend i'm going to to, to Derby for the reseller summit. I'll meet new people there. I'll probably get quite drunk, but I'll, I'll have mm -hmm. some new experiences. Um, and I'll get to meet my accountant and his partner as well um, and spend time with them, which, um, you know, I really enjoy. We're already planning cocktails for the Friday night. So I'm already planning a hangover for Saturday morning. Um, and those kind of things that, whereas if I just stuck as I was, you know, I would probably leave Wrexham. I'd just be in Weatherspoons on the weekend and that'd be it. 
that'd be that would be my life something else would have happened to take you in a different direction that's all it's just something something bad happened it took you in a direction it's like sliding doors isn't it and you just never know where something's going to take you and, and it's brought you here and you're definitely better for it i'm sure um I'll and, I'll, and I'll, I'll repeat again andrew well done um on being debt free and and sticking to it and being so dedicated and working so hard i mean the hours that you've put in over the years is crazy I'm, i know for sure about that because i've seen you do it um so well done for that um we're coming to the end but i've got three questions to ask you that i've been asking every guest that comes on the podcast uh so you're ready for these yeah let's go for it okay the first question i've got for you is what is your best find or your most unusual thing that you've found? I think I think my best find um, was a um, dress in TK Maxx by Bruno Cucinelli, uh, which Who? Bruno it's it's an Italian designer, <laughs> but um, like I don't know why, but for some reason I was just going through the ladies' dresses and I saw this dress that had been marked oh, yeah. down from a thousand quid uh to like 50 like you know they put the original rrp on the original rrp was like stupid yeah um really do go for that this is like that's the madness um and they've been sell, trying to sell it for 250 quid and nobody had bought it and then um uh they'd reduced it and i thought i paid 50 quid for it uh but i found the receipt uh just yesterday when i was clearing out the house and i paid 10 pound for it and sold it for 250 quid nice uh but that's tk maxx it's crazy that that's just a high street shop yeah i bought stuff in tk maxx as well and and i know a few resellers who have but that's a real nice profit isn't it on a on a tk maxx item yeah Yeah. and i made thousands from tk maxx over the years uh good store to source from if you're looking to do uh clothing um we don't do it anymore because just don't do clothing anymore but and the most unusual thing which i thought we're never going to sell i thought i'd make this big mistake buying them was menopause pills oh yeah <laughs> bought bought these menopause bills in uh, pills in home bargains for 99p each okay. and the, the souls in them were looking really good it's like going for 15 20 quid so I, I cleared the shelves in every home bargain around. I had hundreds, literally hundreds of these menopause pills. Uh, the problem is when you get something like that, everyone else is doing the same. Right. So it became this right race to the book and people were banging them out for five quid a, a pack just to get oh, their money God. back. And I, I, I thought, well, I'm not doing that. I'm just going to keep my price as they were, but I didn't, think about the fact that they had expiry dates on him oh shit and then i was just like uh going through reviewing the listing after not selling for about three months and uh i had the the items i was like oh crap there's an expiry date on these and it's next month oh, uh shit. i had 200 packs but everyone who had been so i updated the listings and put them as short dated i knocked down the price to 10 pound a pack Right, and what happened was everyone who had been selling them for five quid a pack because they knew about the expiry dates sold out. Yeah, so all of a sudden, I was the only person on eBay selling them at a cheap price, everyone else was still at 20 quid. You know, big companies who had them, yeah, but had longer expiry dates on them. And it's only a best before, so people weren't that bothered about the fact that the best before was next month. So they did, they were flying out like hotcakes, and all of a sudden, I made, made a couple of grand from him. <laughs> it's mad isn't it it's mad I've this been selling for games but i've Crazy. been on it for months every time i go live people be asking me have you sold any menopause pills nope not sold any and then next week come on yeah sold out 200 packs gone interesting yeah that's crazy uh, okay question two for you um have you got a goal that you can that, you, that you'd give yourself for this year what what's your aims for this year yeah so uh my personal goal, move over to the North Wales coast, uh, hopefully okay. Pastatum, but I've seen a nice bungalow in Kimnall Bay today, so you never know. Oh, Could Christ, be across the no. street. Please um, can't can't <laughs> wait to uh, explore Kimnall Bay's finest pubs. Um, 
That's some but, nice yeah, little bingo so around here. Uh, there are. Uh, so my personal goal is to uh, relocate me and the business to the coast. And then my the business goal uh, that I want to do is after I've relocated, I, I want to go through everything I've got listed on eBay. Uh, so two and a half, 20, over 2,600 buy it now is at the minute. I want to go through all of them, have a look to see what's not selling and get it off, just cleanse the store. And prop- yeah. And I've been operating for all these years without a stock control system, like no SKUs at all. Mm. Um, I just have stuff stored wherever I put it quite often, and I just remember where it is, which isn't always great for picking orders. So I want to implement a stock control system after I've moved as well, where everything has proper SKUs, so I know where it is. So picking orders just takes a few minutes rather than an hour. Yeah, makes sense. There you go. Perfectly achievable goals for the year. Mm. Maybe we'll see you in Kimmel Bay soon. Yeah. Um, have you got a tip? Here's number three. Have you got a tip or a piece of advice or a word of wisdom for any resellers out there listening or watching? I would say for this is particularly true for somebody new to it, but for anyone, think about your storage and where you're going to store your stuff and have that properly organized link back to the previous point because if you've got storage set up from the get-go that's properly organized it becomes so much easier to run your business yeah. um how many people have lost uh stock can't find where they put it because can't remember it. I, I, I have to cancel orders as a result and then lose money and then find the item six months later um so yeah get getting your organization sorted spending the time today if you've got an ebay store at the minute uh and you're having issues sometimes finding stuff just spend a couple of days getting it all sorted because you will make more money doing that than you will by actually listing stuff for a couple of days i've been there myself uh up for quite a long time i didn't have a system either other than things being stored in categories like t-shirts yeah. in sizes uh, but now I operate a SKU system on the majority of stuff, which definitely helps a lot. It really does. But then I, I only have 800 items now, or 800 listings, should I say. Um, whereas, you know, I, I did have up to 15, 1,600 at one point. Uh, but, yeah, good bit of advice that, Andrew. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, we're coming up to the end of the podcast. Um, um, thank you so much for coming on and being honest and sharing the ups and downs of life and what you got to do to get yourself out of a hole. Uh, well done again. Where can people find you if they want to go look you up? Uh, yeah, you can find me on Instagram if you've got that, which is uh, at Money Mental UK, just as it is there, but with no spaces. Same on YouTube. I'm on there as well. I will be live getting drunk on the internet later on. Um, mm. I think tonight. Um and if you are on Facebook and if you type in Money Mental Reselling, you should bring up my Facebook group as well. Always looking for new members there to um, to share our experiences with. If you're Jason. listening um, on Spotify, Apple Music or any of the other podcast channels, then I'll also link Andrew's YouTube channel uh, in the descriptions of those two. So you can just go straight and click one of those. You don't need to search. I'll link it in. And um, there's nothing much more to say other than thank you to everybody who's been watching here live on YouTube and thank you to everyone listening. If you are listening on a podcast channel, please, if you've got a second, just give us a five star, presuming that it is five star quality content, which I'm sure it is. Um, Give us a five star on Spotify, Apple Music and that. Um, And if you even have like 30 seconds just write a very quick review it helps a lot actually for a podcast and it's so hard to get these podcasts like any traction and get people listening and involved and stuff so if you do have time please do that for us um that is pretty much it thank you again andrew really appreciate you coming on it's been a really interesting chat and hopefully it's inspired someone or given someone the confidence who might have been in a similar similar situation to you All done. Thank you. Thanks again. Cheers, everybody. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. 
that's it for today's episode of the Everything Reselling Podcast. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, to follow or to subscribe wherever you're watching or listening to this podcast. And we'll see you on the next episode.